What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again. Um, earlier last week, um, I had three different people ask me if I'd like to talk about anxiety disorders, uh, social anxiety, and, and how it's affected me in my lifetime. Um, and I would like to talk about that today if, you, if you'd like to bear with me. Um, I think a lot of one of the reasons people watch my videos is because they can relate to me. Um, and I think maybe I inspire some people, I've been told, because I put myself out there. Um, even though I'm a big guy and I know I'm going to get made fun of and I know it's going to be hard and a lot of things are really hard for me to do. I, I don't stay stuck in the house. I, I don't, you know, stay at home. I don't, tr I'm not afraid to travel. I'm not afraid to go to places and, and do things and meet new people and, and create videos here on YouTube knowing that the internet is a hate machine and that it's going to just yell at me and scream at me and tell me how fat and stupid and awful I am and how I should be playing video games and, and I think they uh, feel like maybe I'm impervious to that stuff and I am but I'm not um, a lot of people don't know about me but I suffer from almost crippling social anxiety disorders um, and other anxiety disorders as well I've been medicated off and on for it and uh, it's caused quite a bit of pain and suffering in my life but I say borderline crippling and not crippling because there are some people out there with anxiety so bad that it's difficult for them to overcome it even through exercising um, and, and, and therapy and through medication um, so certainly mine isn't the worst case scenario or, or even close to it and if you're watching this and you're suffering from real honest anxiety issues you know the kind that debilitate your life Please know I'm not making light of your situation. I'm just talking about my own personal experiences. Uh, but for the most part, any time I have to do anything, my brain panics. Um, one of the few things I've become comfortable with now is, is I'm very comfortable in my own skin now, and I, I'm very comfortable in doing a lot of things. My brain is where I'm not comfortable. Um, when I was younger and when I was growing up, uh, I couldn't talk to other people, and I, I tried not to. And if I got into a place where I felt safe and the anxiety would subside, I was pretty much the person you're talking to now. But when I eight, nine, ten, I was quiet and silent and afraid to talk to people. But I made exceptions. I joined the Boy Scouts, even though it was very, very hard to do. And I got involved in clubs at school. And even though it made me feel awful, and even though when I try to do these things my brain would scream no 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 I did it anyway and I learned a mantra a long time ago called fake it till you make it and even though on the inside I was panicking screaming at the top of my lungs you know don't do this don't fucking do this you're gonna get hurt somebody's gonna say something stupid to you you're gonna get insulted you're gonna have your feelings hurt it's gonna suck it's gonna suck it's gonna suck it's gonna suck on the outside, I'd still be high. My name's Boogie. Nice to meet you. And um, what I found is that an equal number of people, whether I got out there and did what I wanted to do or I stayed at home and shied away, um, and I, I did that for seven years straight, <laughs> which I do want to talk about at some point, but um, uh, whether I stayed at home and shied away or went out in public, my feelings were getting hurt all the time anyway. And I learned that really, it doesn't matter if some kid calls you fat on the bus. It doesn't matter if some woman in a restaurant points and laughs. It doesn't matter if some kid goes, Mama, why is the guy so big in, at Walmart? It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, I, I'm going to turn to dust. They're going to turn to dust. We're all going to turn to dust. You know, life will eventually be over. Why should I let my anxiety, why should I let my, my capacity to, why should I let it limit what I'm capable of, limit what I'm going to experience in this life, and limit, why should I let anything limit me? Why should I let my size limit me? Why should I let my fucked up dysfunctional brain limit me? And so I began exposure therapy, going out and doing what it was I wanted to do. And I joined clubs, and I joined experiences, and I went to football games, and I got into band. And even though all of those were excruciating to accomplish, that there were times where I would have to go to the bathroom, 
and in privacy cry my eyes out. I did it anyway. Um, and eventually I met a girl, my first girlfriend, and eventually my heart got broken when it happened. I spent about seven years shut in to my home. And I had a handful of friends that would come over from time to time to see me. But uh, I wouldn't go over to the people, other people's houses. I wouldn't go out and do anything. I spent seven years as a shut-in. And you know what I learned in those seven years? Number one, I learned uh, the most important lesson was that I wasn't happy doing that. Maybe I wasn't getting hurt. Maybe I was okay. Maybe life was acceptable. But I wasn't happy. And I wanted to be happy. I wanted to find things to make myself happy. I was suffering from depression because nothing good was happening. Everything was just okay. <coughs> the second thing I learned uh, through all of that is how much gaming, playing video games, helped me. And now there's a study that I read the other day, and I'm going to try to find it, and I'm going to link it below for those of you who'd be interested in reading such things. But it's proven, I think it was Stanford, that has proven that people who play just 30 minutes of video games a day, that is as effective or more effective than medicating for social anxiety and for other anxiety disorders, that being able to play a game and to accomplish things in a game can create the same chemistry and the same reward system as actually going out and doing things. And once the person has done that, at the beginning of the day or at the end of that day, they feel more calm and more relaxed and more safe and just happier in general. And it's easier for them to go out and do the things that they would normally not be able to do because of anxiety. So gaming, once again, solving the world's problems. Um, but I played social games. And I used the internet as a way to protect myself while still reaching out to other people. I talked to people in the games I played, EverQuest and World of Warcraft. I talked to people that I met through those games on ICQ and, and, and uh, Yahoo and, and those old chat programs. I would uh, join online communities like FARC.com and I would discuss things there. And, and I learned through these experiences, eventually I, I went on to TeamSpeak and then eventually Ventrilo, and I learned the way the world worked through this. I learned how to socialize. I learned exposure therapy. It's what it was. I, I, I exposed myself to other people in a safe, controlled environment and became friends with these people and learned things and used those things to practice in real life. Um, and I, I began building friendships again in, in the real world and eventually I started dating again and eventually I got a job at, a, at a, a game store and I was able to get out into the world and finally start doing it again. And I'll tell you the one thing that hasn't changed is that I still feel as much anxiety today as I, I did when I was a kid. I've just learned how to deal with it. I've learned how to make room for it. I've learned how to succeed in spite of it. And maybe there is a medicine out there that I could be taking that would make it go away. And maybe I probably should look at that medicine because I would be a lot healthier and a lot happier. And maybe I wouldn't be so afraid to get out to the gym and, and do these things. But even today, even today, I'll give you an example. One of my good friends uh, needed a ride because her car broke down. And of course, I wanted to do it. Of course, it's the right thing to do. Of course, I want to go out and help my friend. Um, but my brain just starts firing off. Well, you know you have no air in your car. You're going to sweat. Oh, well, you know your car is currently untagged. You're going to get pulled over. You're going to get a ticket. You really shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. You should stay home. Stay home. Stay home. Just don't do anything. Do anything. Just play Diablo. Play Diablo. Ignore everything. You shouldn't even work today. You shouldn't even make that video. People won't like the video. People won't care. People don't want to watch it. You're stupid. You're fat. You're stupid. All people are going to do is call you fat and a stupid thing. You know? And uh, that constant narrative, that constant dialogue always in the back of your brain. If you learn how to to deal with it. So if you're suffering from anxiety disorder, that's what worked for me. That's how I've done it. I've learned to cope with it. I've learned to live with it. And of course, mine is not extreme. And if you do suffer from extreme cases, use some of what I've suggested here. But see a therapist, look at medication, look at medicine, try to talk to somebody who can really, really help you. But keep in mind the things I told you here today because I changed my life. You know, 
Um, to recap, gaming, Stanford University tells us it solves anxiety issues, makes you a happier, healthier person. Um, exposure therapy, going out and doing it anyway. Getting in a controlled, safe environment, and expose yourself. Meet people through the internet, talk to them. And write me if you want. I, I can't always respond. I try to respond as much as I can. But if you tweet me, my fans see it. And if you see my fans, you guys should talk to each other. Because that's really what I would love to see happen here. I would love to see the people that are, who are watching this, who do suffer from social anxiety, to reach out to one another. Um, so if you are on Twitter, well, I'm going to create a hashtag on my Twitter feed. Um, it's, a, it's a hashtag, Boogie2988. If you follow that hashtag today, and you're interested in reaching out to somebody today, why don't you tweet that today? If you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. Follow me. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about it here. I appreciate you guys listening to me, and I appreciate you guys uh, watching it. And now I'm going to go and upload this, and be miserable the entire time it's uploading, because I'm afraid you're going to fucking hate it. And that I did a shitty job, and that I shouldn't upload it, and that I shouldn't leave the house today, and that I shouldn't do anything. Just sit and eat and be fat. It's fun being crazy.